But we're living in a time where there's so many distractions and so many things going on in our world to pull our attention away. And, of course, COVID has been a major contributor to that. The reason that I didn't have my, sur my surgery done yet is simply because of that COVID issue because all the intensive care beds are consumed by COVID patients. Y'all pray they clean those beds good. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go in there with two cans of Lysol. Amen. But anyway, there's a lot of things that are distracting us. What's happening in Russia right now in the Ukraine? What's happening in our own beloved United States of America with all the changes and the things that are taking place? There are a lot of things today. And I think probably one of the crucial things that today that is robbing Christians in their Christian walk with God is the issues of the things we're dealing with as a nation. I don't think today that what's happening in Russia is so much keeping people out of church. I think probably because of what you have on some of you this morning and what, I have, and what I'm donning here in my hand is one of the major reasons today of drifting and if we're not careful, we get away from God and we let time consume. But, you know, we seemingly find time to do anything else that we want to do, whether we are donning one of these or not. We can always find time to be where we want to be, to do what we want to do. So it seems like there's become a turning away somewhat from the Word of God away from God's house. And uh, today, it's interesting, the writer of Hebrews, who we don't know who exactly the pen and the parchment was. We know ultimately it's God. He wrote the entirety of the scriptures. But in Hebrews, we're dealing with today a subject that maybe you're not going to be uh, jumping up and doing as Tiff was encouraging you to do earlier, saying, <laughs> praise the Lord. But uh, it is a necessary message and I want you to hear the message. Now, my voice is better today than it's been. And I've been trying to get it back. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that, if it's medications, whatever it is. But thank God I actually slept till 6 o'clock this morning, which is a fringe benefit. <laughs> Amen. You just don't know. And uh, got up and tried to take care of myself and doing all the right things to try to be able to be in this pulpit to preach this word to you. Now, if I may, please, and don't take this as an insult. It was, it was hard. This whole week, past week, these last four or five weeks have been hard. Preparing, and after I get up here and preach this message, I'm telling you right now, I can go out and get in the car, I feel like I've been shot out of a gun, Honestly. But I refuse to quit. And it would be easy to sit down. And when I, by God's grace, uh, after this thing is over, I've got one motive, and that is to get back in this church, back preaching this word, because this is, this is what my life is. And God's not through with me, and he's not through with the message that he's given me. And let me tell you what, if, if it had been the case, I'd have been dead a month ago or earlier. Because I honestly believe God's given me a refreshing. But in that refreshing, there's a message for us. And I want you to receive this message today, not as an insult, but today as a challenge. Because these distractions that we're facing, they will have impact on every one of us. They will have impact on me also as a preacher of the gospel with the challenges, and I, I want to write down some of the things that I faced maybe later on and talk to you about them down the road, but over the last month or so. And some of the things that when I've sat at home, and I tell you, it's a bad feeling when you sit and you just feel like you can't even get a prayer out of your gut, out of your spirit. You just feel so trained. Thank you challenged 
disappointed. I mean, where's the words? A to Z, right? But God lifts you up. And what a refreshing it has been for me to be in church again today. And by God's grace, unless they change my surgery, I'll be here next Sunday again. And then I'm going to hopefully get in there. I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to cut off my cell phone. I'm going to unplug my house phone. I'm going to send a notice to Central Health. Do not call me on that week, except if you want me there early. And I'm not taking no calls from Central Health. I'm showing up on the night. I want my surgery done, and I want it done now. Amen. So I got work to do. I got to stop playing around. Amen. The danger of drifting from Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. I'm a little late starting, but that's okay. The writer of Hebrews has made a detailed case for the superiority of Jesus Christ. And he's done that over the two most important elements of Judaism. And the, that, those two important issues of Judaism... And listen carefully here, is prophets and angels. So now the writer pauses to issue a warning, and that warning is just not issued to those of that day and when they were writing and the, and the ink was still wet. This was written for you and I today, the church. This morning as I got up, I got up, you know, at 6 and, did all the thing, took my pills and whatever, took my shower. And I watched a little bit of television, some of the messages and different things. Some I was encouraged with. Some of them I thought, you're phony as a piece of baloney and turned them off. And uh, I can tell you what, man, I, that, that swagger, I, this is wild. I can tell by the swagger of the preacher on the platform where his attention is at, whether it's on him or whether it's on the Lord. But... We're given then three reasons for the warning that is included in what God is reflecting here. One is about the superiority of God's message. And God's message is superior. Secondly, the severity of God's judgment. And we may think today, well, is this then judgment? This judgment of, of what we are facing with the variants of this corona disease and virus is not even a drop in the bucket compared to the judgment that God is going to hurl out upon this earth. And if you don't believe that, then you read and start around chapter 6 of the book of the Revelation and read that and study that. And I'm telling you right now, it'll make your hair stand up on end. Amen. Not only that, not only the superiority of the message, not only the severity of God's judgment, but also the sufficiency of God's salvation. His salvation is sufficient. Now, the right of Hebrews wants us to see that the things that we have heard are the truths of the gospel. There is no error in God's word. What God has said, God has meant. I'm appalled that through the years, people have tried to rewrite the Bible and tried to rewrite what God has said. God does not need us to rewrite what he said. He needs us to live what he has declared. And so the writer then pleads with the, the reader, that is to take the message of the gospel for, and, and live by it and not take it for granted, but to pay close attention to it. Here's my point. We are not paying attention to to the gospel. The church today is not paying attention to the gospel. Christians today are not paying attention to the gospel. I don't know what you think is going to happen, but we cannot continue as we're going. We are on a path of self-destruction, not only as a nation, but as a world. And I don't care who's in control as far as presidents, monarchs, or whatever, or emperors, or you name it. 
This world is not going to continue as it is. And I think we best embrace what Amos said, prepare to meet your God. My only alternative of getting out of the surgery is maybe Jesus will come back in the rapture and that will take care of it. I don't even have to worry about it. Praise the Lord. Amen. But if that happens, hallelujah. But if it doesn't, we must learn to press towards the mark, the prize, and the high calling that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we have got to learn to start paying attention to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the great Puritan, his name was John Owen, he wrote on this verse, and this is what he said, quote, We are to consider the author of it, the manner of it, the weight of it, and the ends of it. Let me read that again. Consider the author of it, the manner of it, the weight of it, and the ends of it. I'm telling you today, we must do more than just listen. We have got to learn to start listening closely to what God's Word is trying to speak to our hearts today. And if we do not wake up, we are going to suffer loss. If we don't wake up to the reality today, this stuff of, you know, I, I, I'm not being critical of other churches, anything of that nature. And I'm not really a TV watcher, have become one somewhat, and I'm bored stiff with it. I'm telling you the truth. But I'm, I'm telling you, so much of what we have before us today is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's all types of theology that has no biblical basis to it. It's a hope so dream that is nothing but a mirage that has no validity to it. We listen closely because God is speaking to us about our condition. And not only does God speak to us about our condition, God is speaking to us today about the remedy. Our remedy is found in Him. And if we don't start getting back to the remedy, we are never going to get to the cure that God has for us. So many people, and this is what I contend, so many people are not listening because we are attuned to what Dr. Fauci and what anybody else is saying and what the experts are saying, but we're not attuned to what God has said about what we're facing and what is to come. Amen. We have totally lost concentration and closeness to the message. So many people have devised even their own gospel. Pastor, I can't come to church. I just can't come to church. Well, bless your little sweet peaking peak, peak, peak heart. I have not been sitting at home staring at the window. I've been a busy person going places. And it's amazing where I see some of our folks in the parking lots that you're in, but you can't come to church. And you're talking about you're scared you're going to get COVID and you're not even wearing a mask. And you think, well, who was that? Could have been one of you. And probably was. I'm telling you, people are not listening. People to devise their own gospel. We think we can get by and do what we want to do and today have absolutely no accountability to God? Are you kidding me? Who do you think God is? Some cosmic bellhop or some old man sitting in a rocking chair in senility in heaven? He's the almighty God, the sovereign God, the exalted God, the high and lifted up God. The God is in control. The God that can do all things. Many are trying to do good works in order to find God's favor. Thinking, well, just do good and God has to honor that. 
Let me tell you what. If you're serving God out of good works, I'm just being bluntly honest, your efforts are fruitless. If you don't know Him in salvation, I wonder if the rapture happened in the next five minutes. How many are sitting in these pews? I wonder how many of you are watching by Mevo on that camera in front of me on live Facebook. I wonder how many of you would go or how many of you would stay. You better first make sure that you are born again. And I know we've had that terminology around the church for years on end. But I'm telling you today, that is a correct terminology that without salvation, you are not going to heaven. It's not on good works. It's not on baptistry. It's not on the Catholic church, the Methodist church, the Presbyterian church, the Baptist church, the Pentecostal church, or any other church. It's all based on the blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he paid for. And if you have not experienced that, you are not going there. And he says, oh, that will come to me. I'll in no wise cast out. Thank God the door is open. Thank God his arms are receptive. Thank God salvation is for every person who will come today. So the idea, this is interesting and I want to share it with you. If you're not listening to the gospel, you're drifting. You're not like the prodigal that just said one day, okay, I'm walking out on you, God. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't really happen that way. That was an analogy. That was a parable. That was an illustration. It's a gradual, subtle way. You start missing. Missing church. Missing the word. Well, I'm going to get back. When? When it's too late and they have to bring you in here in a box? I mean, when are you going to, when are you going to get right with God? When are you going to start serving Him? When are you going to start living for Him? When are you going to stop drifting? And that's what happens. We blame everything that's going on in the world because of our drifting mentality. The reason you're drifting, it's not somebody else in the church. It's not your children's fault. It's your fault. You have made up the decision of not coming to church and you're drifting from God, from His Word, and you are going to suffer loss. It's time to get back to the things today that honor God and that's His house, that's His Word, and today, serving Him. Hallelujah. So this original, uh, the idea in the original, you said you must have raised the blades. No, I had a banana and some good fresh orange juice this morning. Guys, i got to keep my potassium up. The, the idea in the original language is that of a ship not making it to the dock of safety. Now, why? It didn't make it to the dock of safety because of the current taking it out to a different route. I don't know if you've ever been around. I lived on the Atlantic Ocean, right directly on the Atlantic Ocean, for two years when I was stationed at Patrick Air Force Base. And it's very interesting to watch the ships. It's interesting to study the currents and how they can pull and draw. We must be earnest when it comes to the gospel. Just as the captain of the ship cannot rest until that vessel is docked and tied down. It's just not docked. That vessel has got to be secured, right? Or to drift. A Christian cannot rest. You cannot take your eyes off of Christ because when you do, you begin to drift. And that's what's happening to Christianity today. That's what's happening to people who profess to be born again. They're drifting on God. And li listen, I don't know your spiritual condition. You know, and God knows. But I think it's time today to get back to God, back to the Word, back to worship. Join me in the book. My points are short, so that's good news for you. Hebrews chapter 2, as we read God's word this morning. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, we ought to give thee more earnest heed. Let's read that again. I like that. 
Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. They are drift on you. For if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. From a great old hymn of the faith, we read part of the lyrics goes like this. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Now, I want you to know this is true today for the church. Now, looking at it maybe, too, in a, in a, in a separate vein, we have survived a lot. And I, I don't know if there's any end to what we're going to be facing I'm not sure, not to be negative, if there's not going to be more intensity to it. But I believe in spite of the faults and failures and weaknesses and worries that the church has encountered, the church of Jesus Christ today still stands. Amen. That churches may have waned some. They may have lost their focus. They may have today closed their doors. But the fact of the matter is today... God is still here to the church. And today the church still stands. And we're the church. And this is no place we quit, give up, and throw in the towel. This is the place where we march forward. And we look to God. And we're not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. So here we are. I mean, in year 2022. And we see secularization today is pounding on the doors of the churches. This, this idea today, along with outside threats that the church is encountering, trying to break down on the church and trying to pull it down to defeat, doing everything that it can to try to demise the church, to try to destroy the church, to try to keep church doors closed and even ineffective. But all of those outside threats, and as bad as they may be today, let me tell you what, they do not hold a candle today. Listen to what I'm going to say. They do not hold a candle today to the unseen threat of Christians drifting on God. We look at everything that's outside the door and blame it. Where really, you remember what Joshua said? I preached for quite a few months on him, didn't I? Joshua said what in the 24th chapter? Ask for me in my house. We will serve the Lord. You can make a decision to let things draw you away and cause you to drift or today you can make a stand and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. If anyone ever told you at the place of your salvation that serving God was going to be a cakewalk or rose strewn petals with ease all the, all the rest of your life, they lie to you. Serving God's tough. Being a Christian's tough. But I'm telling you right now, I would not take anything for it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed that I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed of who I represent. I'm not ashamed of that blessed book called the Word of God. And you know, I was listening to a preacher this morning. He made reference. He said, well, you know that old King James ver Version. And I just felt like going right through the set and say, pardon me, old King James Version. That book is just alive today as the day God gave the Word and penned it. Amen. But we've taken all these other perversions of the Bible and twisted the words 
that doesn't say anything. And it's the same thing with the hymn books. Many of the hymns today, you try to read the hymns, they take the blood, they take the deity, they take everything holy out of the, even the hymn books. What do you got? You got nothing. And that's exactly what your life winds up with. Nothing. You're void and your life is ineffective. Man, listen today. Get rid of that threat that's trying to cause you to drift and today come back and embrace the gospel of Jesus and serve him faithfully. Be on the firing line. To drift in your faith journey, all you've got to do is nothing. Just keep doing what you're doing. It takes an asserted effort. Amen. 30 years ago when I went into full-time ministry, if anyone had told me, you're going to go through this, this, and the other, I'm not sure what I would have done. But I'm going to tell you, through every storm, trial, loss, challenge, problem, I can stand here and tell you it was worth it all to serve God. I'm talking about a passive attitude. This cultural river that is being allowed to take us wherever it wants. It's, you know, your life is kind of like a canoe. I've never been a uh, canoe person. Maybe some of you have been canoers. You've been out in the canoe and everything. Yeah. I think too much of me getting wet to do that. You know, uh, you get in a canoe, it has two oars, right? I know enough about a canoe. If you leave one oar on the bank, you're going to go in circles. It, it ain't going to work. Bad English. Now, in, in Christianity today, there's something we have to look at in this canoe. In that canoe, you have two oars. You have the oar of orthodoxy. By that, I mean Christian value. The biblical values of God's word. And secondly, the oar of obedience. You've got to have both. You've got to utilize both. If you don't use both oars, you're going to go in circles and you're going to go in basically the river's direction of wherever it's taking you. Could it be today that you're drifting in your own spiritual life? And it's because today you're not staying with the orthodoxy of God's word, the biblical fundamentals of God's word. You're not living by faith. You're not living today by trusting. You're living today by sight. And you've left the oar of obedience also out of your life. And you're not serving God. And you're not faithful to God. Then you've got every right today to find yourself cascading down the river of life with no direction and not knowing where you're going. I know where I'm going. And I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. In Hebrews we have seen the superiority of Christ where we find the power of the gospel and it is the power of the gospel that deflects any deflections off of our gaze of Christ. What's keeping you from looking unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of your faith? As we come to the theme, it's simply this. By God's grace, let's fight the drift. Amen. You've got to fight it every day. Every day. All right. I think I've got four points, so I'm going to make them short, short and sweet. I don't know how sweet, but short. So the author says, one, fixate on Christ. We must pay close attention or closer attention on Christ than the things of this world. Christ is a sure, steady anchor for our soul. And if you're not anchored on him, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get swept away. Every wind of doubt, if you don't know what you believe, you'll believe anything. So the wood of our ore 
of orthodoxy today is made of what? The gospel. And so therefore, when you look at the gospel, we need to be clear on the gospel. The gospel, the Bible teaches that God is a holy creator. This didn't happen just by some freak accident. It didn't happen as an explosion. We just didn't appear out of nothing. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. His image in creation then was disfigured by sin. And that's Adam and Eve and we too all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Here's a good synopsis of the gospel and salvation. Sin is not a mistake. And that's what we've tried to make it. Sin is a crime against God. And God's not going to tolerate it. But this gracious God in His love gave us Jesus who would be our substitute. He took your degradation, your shame, your shackles, your sins, and He took them to the cross. And He died on the cross for you and I. And so from the cross, we get forgiveness and righteousness. And He says, and I'm glad we have that promise, that if we will come to Him, He will in no wise cast us out. I don't know your spiritual condition. If you're not saved, I'm telling you, today is the day of salvation, and now is accepted time. Have you radically surrendered your life to Jesus? Well, I think I did. No. If you got saved, you know you're saved. Amen. I know I put on a black suit this morning. Amen. I know where I live. I know who is my daughter and my son-in-law. I know what church. I just didn't show up at any church. I showed up at the church that I pastor. I know these things. Far greater, I know that I'm a child of God. And I know where I'm going. I hope you can say that today. Too many Christians are drifting. And their attention today has been focused on COVID rather than Christ. Their attention is on people rather than the Prince of Peace. You know, listen, we all have a way of irritating each other sometimes, don't we? Amen. <laughs> Ask Drew and Tiff over the last 30, 40 days. <laughs> Spent a lot of time on me. Hell, you irritate the living daylights out of you. Amen. <laughs> but listen, we are to love people. And I hate to tell you, you're not perfect. Amen. Everybody's, you know, listen, put Jesus first. We give God excuses rather than exhortation. We, we talk about the world instead of talking about winning the world to Christ. And that's time, I think it's time that we understand the cost that our sins came with. And it's time today to rejoice in the mercy of, of God, and start asking God to move in your life and to start using you for His glory and praise. Man, you know what my greatest desire is? I want to live. I'm not looking to die. Yes, heaven's great. I'm looking forward to going there. But let me tell you what. I believe God has got some more souls for this old duck to win and some more messages for this old duck to preach. And some more things for me to do for his kingdom. I'm not going to sit down and quit. And you're not either. We're going to rise up and we're going to build. And we're going to win this town for Christ. Amen. We've got universities on every corner that profess Christianity. we got all the... You name it. We had everything in this town to turn a town upside down. And I'll be honest with you, Lynchburg, Virginia is one of the most heathen towns in the state of Virginia. Yes, I said it, and yes, I mean it. And it's time the church get busy and stop drifting and get back to Jesus. Amen. Which takes me to point two. Get serious about discipleship. There are five major warnings in Hebrews. 
Here's the first one. Pay attention. And that's what he's saying. So I'm not giving you the other four. Yield your soul to God's word. And how serious are you about your discipleship? Tom Radigan, a precious man, that served God out of this church for many years. Put that above the door before you go out. And it speaks about our life in discipleship. And today, our mission field is out there. And somebody needs to see Jesus in you. How serious are you about your worship? How serious are you about getting to church and giving God some praise and glory and honor Him and thank Him? And you know, I believe it's time we get serious about our worship. How serious are you about being in church? How serious are you about giving? How serious are you about serving? How serious are you about loving? We, if we're not serious about these, then we're drifting. Amen. Third, embrace real accountability. Drifting happens in a way we really, rarely see it in ourselves. Or we can see it in others. It can be, you know, checked by involving others in your life. And here's a good thing to do. You know, get you an accountability partner. If you're having trouble reading the Bible, get an accountability partner who calls you every day and say, hey, did you read the study guide today? Yeah, you know what? That, that will make you, you're either going to answer it as a lie or the truth. And, and when you do that, it's going to make you more accountable. If you've got issues with things in your life, get an accountability partner of somebody that will help you. It's not saying that you're weak and frail. It's admitting it, but you want to do something about it. So take, it, take responsibility and be accountable for your life because you're going to stand before him one day and what you have done and how you've served is what you're going to be rewarded for. And then lastly, rejoice in the greatness of the gospel. How will we escape? You probably say, after this message this morning, you'll probably say, man, I wish they'd hurry up and give him that surgery, man. We need, we need a break from that duck for about four or five weeks. Amen. How will we escape? I'm just preaching to the truth. And I'm telling you, if, I, if I'm preaching any other thing, folks, I'll go in my office and take my ordination certificate and everything else and tear it up, throw it in the trash can and go at home and sit and watch it all. Because God didn't call me to pat you on the head and push you out the door and to make you feel good. God's called me to improve and help you in your life to be a stronger, vibrant Christian for Christ. And yes, sometimes we need that patting on the head and pushing you know, but listen, I love every one of you and I preach because I care for you and I want you blessed. That's the purpose. So here we are. If we neglect so great a salvation, the, the, the writer lines it out. First declared by the Lord. It was proclaimed by the apostles. Also, God bore witness through Jesus and the miracles that were given you can see that there in verse 4 as he tells you. And lastly, the ad administration of the gifts of the, of the Holy Spirit that are administered that brings us to a full gospel in our life. It's been given to us. This is a gift. And it's a gift that's been given to us for a joyful salvation. Joyful. You don't have to endure. You don't have to just try to get through and hang on. I've had some nights over the last month that I had to kind of hang on and endure. Don, I know sitting in that hospital many, many days and nights with Faye, there was a lot of endurance, wasn't it? And not only that, but at home too. And some of you who are going through trials in your life, there's been a lot of endurance. But I'm glad to tell you 
that you don't have to endure joyful salvation. Man, greater is he that is within you than he that is within this world. Amen. How can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I believe today, listen. I believe it's time we, the Christian people, instead, I believe we start to rejoice in the Lord. You know what? Button up your, your pity party. Shut down your complaint system and start lifting up the name of the Lord and letting Him be first and foremost. And watch God work in your life and watch Him pour out His Spirit. And today, make up your mind, I'm not going to be a drifter. I'm going to be a cleaver. And I'm not talking about beaver either. <laughs> no, I didn't. I got tired of it. I got so sick of television I could spit. <laughs> Cleave to the Lord. Search Him out. Love Him and live for Him. Just fall in love with Him afresh and anew. And let it start right here at this altar today. And come and say, Lord, help me that I do not become a drifter. And if I have, forgive me. And Lord, get me back on track. Let's stand. Lord, we put this invitation in your hand. We ask for a mighty moving of the Holy Spirit. Whether it's someone who is watching by Mevo on Facebook or someone in these pews. I pray today that, Lord, it's easy for us to just stay like we are, stand in these pews, and about three minutes we'll be out these doors. Or, Lord, we can make a decision that, Lord, we get tired of this life of drifting and being a drifter and we're missing the blessings of God. May we literally run to altars of blessings today and provision. May we come seeking what you've got. May your